I, I was a little confused about tonight's program because it's actually a first Tuesday on a first Tuesday, which is <laughs> go figure. Anyway, um, not to see everybody uh, tonight. This is going to be a little bit of a hairy program uh, because we've never done anything quite like this, but it should be a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward to it. But Jim mentioned that uh, you know uh, we are very pleased to donate every year to teachers to help them with their arts programs. And we have one of the recipients that's um, been uh, with us for nine years. And uh, to try to teach arts in the school today is really a struggle. And, uh, and Vince told me that, um, that our help really has made a big difference to her, his efforts. So Vince Sebastian is a graduate of Chicago, Chicago Art Institute, and he now teaches the sixth and seventh grades, or sixth, seventh, and eighth grades at Savano Community School. So let me introduce to you Vince, who's going to sh show some of the work that his students have done. Vince? Thank you, and it's very nice to be here. It's an honor to be here. Um, Hold your mic. Okay. Um, I first applied for a grant nine years ago, and um, my budget at school, um, I applied for the middle school um, grant, which is $300. And I mentioned to Michael tonight, he didn't know that, but that's almost half of my budget for the year. So um, it really, really helps our small, small school. I have 40 students, uh, sixth or eighth grade. Um, and they really make good use of the materials that we can get. And thank you, Sarnoff and Henry Sarnoff uh, Art. So um, they're going to run some slides of some of the work. Okay, they're on right now. Okay. So that that there is a uh, cutout that's that's done on uh, board and painted in acrylics. Um, different media, you know, drawing with color. Uh, we did a lot of uh, printmaking, that's watercolor. They're, how old are they? <laughs> 12 to 15, something, 14 maybe. So, um, because of our location, I've, I've always wanted to pursue uh, Western art with them because of where we live and uh, the history of the area and, and our town. So um, it wasn't that uh, much of a big stretch to to, uh, to do Western art because we were already doing it. So uh, this is printmaking that's a linoleum block that's carved and then inked up. So is that. It's about 15 inches wide, 12 inches wide, something like that. Uh, watercolor. That was on the cover of the um, Tucson Festival of Books um, Awards booklet. That's watercolor also. Um, no, it's all students. Um, and we're a charter school. So uh, when I first started, art was an hour and a half long. And they've cut back and cut back, and uh, we're down to 45 minutes once a week. <laughs> so you can imagine cleaning up and setting up um, once a week. Yeah. So that leaves me with like a half an hour of working time with the kids. So that beautiful watercolor up there, landscape. Do those kids stay with you for the year, or they rotate? They do. They they stay. So yeah. This is middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So um, it's an honor for me to be here and to personally meet many of you and also to say thank you. Um, you know, we have a small school, and it, um, what you do for us and for other schools is, is really important. So thank you. Thank you. Is to present our three speakers. Uh, they hardly need an introduction because you all know them. Some of you even own them. <laughs> in, 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 in a matter of speaking. Uh, let's see, how many of you, by any chance, own some work by one of these three guys? Oh, look at that, look at that. Yeah. 
Now you have to applaud. Okay. Um, you know, I uh, in preparation for tonight, I was looking up the history of horses versus cars, trains, and automobiles, and uh, found out that um, actually one of our members who shall go unnamed received a speeding ticket today, and the first speeding ticket was for going 12 miles an hour in a 10 mile an hour zone. <laughs> That's a true story. Uh, but and actually there's a lot more history of in my research about um, races between horses and trains. And the first one was in 1830. And uh, the train w overtook the horse very easily, but then it broke down, so the horse won. <laughs> <laughs> he was a bystander. <laughs> so anyway, um, so you've all had a chance, I'm sure, to look at this extraordinary painting. It's extraordinary in several different ways. I mean, one of which is that it's a collaboration between three artists. This is something that is highly unusual for three to uh, to work collaboratively on a painting and still be talking to each other <laughs> after <laughs> after all, all of that. And I think that the um, the compatibility of three artists is really, really remarkable. But there's something wrong with this painting here. And that is that there are no names on the purchase card. So maybe we could take care of that tonight. Okay, so our, our speakers are Richard Eams, Fred Hamley, Michael Ewing. Uh, you know them from their active membership in Friends of Western Art. But um, despite that, I'd like to ask you to join me in giving a warm welcome to our three speakers tonight. Three for the Money, a painting by Richard Iams, Fred Hamley, and Michael Yoni. Collaboration among professional artists is very rare. Differing styles, subjects, and media compounded with individual personalities are challenges not easily overcome. Three of our Tucson artists have completed a masterpiece painting representing an early Arizona event for our 52nd annual Mountain Oyster Club Contemporary Western Art Show. Richard Iams and Fred Hamley and Michael Ewing worked five months composing and painting this five foot by five foot representation of a match race between two horse metal cowboys in a mid 1920s automobile. This scene suggests the cultural shift from horse to automobile happening in the early 1900s. It is well titled as Three for the Money. The race takes place in front of our southern Arizona mountains. An older cowboy reigns Fred Hamley's gray horse as they race Michael Ewing's younger cowboy in bay alongside Michael's black model team. The Ford is driven by a city man sporting a handlebar mustache. These characters are framed by Richard Iams' dramatic sky and a lush and northern landscape of mountains, swaros, desert plants, and sand. The three met at the MO Club in June to discuss the project with each presenting ideas of Arizona settings, horses, and characters. Richard's last suggestion was an image depicting a horse and automobile race in a Sonoran landscape. It was the perfect idea. Each artist brought his signature and distinctive style to the project. Richard was selected to unify the painting. Richard stretched the canvas and painted the first draft in his studio, leaving silhouettes for Fred's and Michael's horses, riders, and model T. A painting relay from studio to studio took place repeatedly, not a small task for a 5x5 five five canvas. The perceived movement in the painting is produced by the sky, mountains, desert floor, horses and riders, and automobile. Altogether, they suggest the speed and competition of the race, but the question remains, who wins? First of all, I'd like to uh, introduce some celebrities in the audience I see. There's Lawrence Lee and Beth and Paul Lee. Paul Hotman in the back. There's Sarah and Carol Linda and Diane back there. I call them celebrities because they're artists. <laughs> okay, so uh, it all begins as 
as he said, with the uh, meetings here at the MO Club. Well, first we ought to jump back to the we, <laughs> the uh, first one Richard and I did. And, and that one, it was all, I did some horses and uh, cowboys standing in water. Richard did this gorgeous, have a, have a supai? Have a, and, and this guy can move mountains, because the canyon, and for the sake of our paintings, he moved the two canyon walls <laughs> close together to, for the sake of the painting. And that turned out rather well. It was a large piece, and we sold it. So uh, fast forward, uh, we're talking about doing it again. I don't know, we're drinking too much again. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we thought Michael might be a nice addition, so we invited him. And we began meeting here at the club uh, and bringing in ideas, uh, drawing sketches, and these two, of course, brought in their laptops so they can compose uh, compositions on the, the laptops. And Richard uh, came up with this one that was the horse, the car, and uh, the landscape, just gorgeous landscape, which looked nothing like this. <laughs> You're going to find as this progressive that nothing was as it started out. Uh, but uh, the uh, the first step was then to well, we we made the selection of Richard's uh, proposal because. Remember who you went to captain in first? Oh, yeah. I, I, I made the mistake of starting to call him captain. Uh, but then uh, I saw the horse, of course, and I thought, well, that's for me. And and Michael, being from Detroit, saw the car and said, oh, that's for him. And he got the bonus horse. You know, I, I could have got both horses, but no. <laughs> And, and Richard, as, as was stated, he, he did it, and he, it's like he did it in five minutes, the whole background, which looks nothing like this. Now, I thought it was gorgeous, the first background, and left the spaces for us. And then it went over to, to my place, which they call Phoenix South, because I moved out by the mom. But uh, uh, back to... You mentioned the, the canvas. Uh, uh, the captain gave me my first task was to find the big stretcher bars. And that was no easy task. I, I had to go to three different art supply places to find the five foot stretcher bars that thickness. And, uh, and then he stretched it together. And, and he did an ingenious thing, I thought, with that side of the brain. He, well, first we voted on what kind of surface it was going to be. He paints a lot on masonite panel. Michael and I both like canvas. So we outvoted him, outvoted the captain. And, and so to get his uh, surface to a stiffness that he likes to work on, he stuffed uh, stiff cardboard behind the canvas, uh, which I thought was ingenious. Uh, and so he did his part. We took it out to. Excuse me. <laughs> we just changed the image. So. Oh, okay. There's the the space you left us on the first one. And I started. Uh, this is Richard's part here. If you want to give him the mic there, so I can talk about his. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you got to get it to them. <laughs> you know, they, they've all agreed to take questions during the presentation, so if any of you have something you'd like to add or find out, And I'm going to ask one question to begin with, though. Um, yeah, and then, then I'll turn to Richard. Now, uh, was there um, a second choice in terms of a, of a topic? Oh, right, Danny. Oh, so yeah, did you, did, you did you immediately come up with this idea of, oh, uh, was, was there no, a... I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to use this thing. So, uh, if I, no, I, we, really, uh, 
Did you ever this see was the last that? thing. This was like way down. I oh. mean, uh, Fred brought a bunch of photographs and drawings that he'd done. Uh, Michael had stuff on an iPad that were, you know, it was mostly just rough stuff. Uh, uh, like Fred had mostly like cowboys that he wanted to do, and then we were going to fit them into some sort of landscape. So it was, we went through a ton of stuff. Um, but, yeah, you want me to tell the real story, Fred? <laughs> We've got to. You got it. I, I, yeah. Uh, we, we went through all, all the things. We were here. We sit and have lunch for a long time. Um, and we'd gone through everything, and, and uh, I was showing the last of what I had on the, on the laptop as ideas. And I had another little folder, and I said, oh, well, while I'm here, I'll show you what I'm, I'm looking at to do next. And I showed them a couple of things, and then I showed them this composition. And you can see their eyes kind of get big. And they immediately jumped on it and said, well, just, we're going to do that. Um, which just, you know, of course, I don't know, gave more incentive to it. But uh, that's why it was the end of the thing. I mean, we, uh, we were considering lots of things like it, but it wasn't this particular composition. So, <laughs> so we did divide up the work then. And uh, you want the mic? Oh, you got no, I, I've got one here. Can you guys hear me? Okay. <laughs> no, you guys can share that one. Also. We, we this way, I can jump in any time I want. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, and that's the way it went. We we had the idea that we wanted something about Arizona, and you know, we talked about Canyon de Shea and a couple other things, and this one came up. I accused Richard of sandbagging us because this was so good to work with. But, it, it, and, and I'm sitting back looking at this car because that's all I did when I was a kid in Detroit was draw cars, okay? So I'm hoping that Fred jumps in and takes the, the gray or the white horse. And he did right away, and I'm like, good, I'm, I'm good, I can do the car. So the division of the labor happened pretty quickly. And now, if we want to turn it over to Richard, talk about just what you did with your start because Fred and I did some sketches ahead of time but really Richard's landscape this this image up there now is basically his beginning to give us some color to work off of when we we did our, our figures okay uh, uh, this is sort of the normal way that well lots and lots of realist painters start out if you can see the drawing sort of the sienna drawing under it um, and then the, the washes of that sort of brick red through it just to kind of get rid of the white which is always a, a, a hurdle uh, and laying out the shapes and forms and I, I tried to get it at, at a finished enough stage where then they could fit in what they were trying to do. Um, uh, I think we've we've all said a lot. A lot of Fred got kind of the prime, the prime spot of that big horse in the front, but that worked out really nicely. Can I say something about? No. That? <laughs> no we, we worked from the photographs that he had to put together, and they saddled me with a three-legged horse. <laughs> I had to do a lot of research to find a horse in the same running. I went to Muggeridge, I went to Pin Interest, uh, find the horse that was in the same position with the, the same legs out in front. I, I at one time wanted to do a, a wooden peg leg on, on the four leg, but they talked me out of it. So. Okay, I'm going to have to interrupt you. Richard, are you finished or do you want to say something? Because we can go on to another slide here. With Fred. He's next. Finish up, Richard. Well, I'm, I'm speechless at this point, but um, I, uh, all of you who are painters know this process. It's, it's perfectly standard stuff. Um, uh, and basically, as you'll hear, th hear through all this, I think these two will, will tell you this, that since Fred called me captain, they elected me to sort of be the background guy, which is great for me. I, I, uh, the job was sort of, well, the job wasn't sort of, it was exactly to lay in the composition and let them then knock out 
their their things uh, uh, fitted into that. And all I had to do then was sort of soften the edges and put a couple of bushes in the front in order to draw it together. But keeping the whole composition together, I think everybody who heard we were doing this or while we were doing it kept exclaiming something along the lines of how can you three guys work together and not kill each other. Um, and from the beginning it was working three different ways of doing things, three different styles into one painting. Uh, and that's where we were at that stage. Now. Okay, Catherine, next slide, please. <laughs> I'm coordinating here. Now, Fred, you're on for this. These are Fred's preliminary uh, preliminary sketch. I'll let him talk about his up there and then his progression on his figure. Yeah, that picture of the horse there in the by itself on the uh, bottom left is to size. I think it's 36 by 36, which was exactly the size that he left in the white on the canvas for me to, to do in. And the, the, working from the photograph, you artists will know this, uh, if you do a, a white horse and it's printed in the, on paper or something, the shadows turn black and the white in the horse is white. You know, there's no definition on the surface. So what I did is I, I took a little one line, a liner brush, and I, I drew lines, contour lines over the, the surface of the horse where the muscles, where I know the muscles are because I've been doing it so long. And uh, these guys can go into their Adobe Photoshop and, and pull out detail that's in the lost shadows and, and, the, and the definition that's on the white horse surface and, and pull that out. But I had to do it all by hand. And, uh, so, but I thought the sketch turned out pretty well. I did it in raw umber and, uh, and Ginger said I ought to keep it so it's up on my wall now. The only part, by the time the painting came to me, uh, I was just starting to develop the face of the horse with some color. But before that, it was all. And then I went to work on the on the big painting. I have one. Okay, next slide, Catherine. I think I'm up on this one. So I got online and did a little bit of research. And you can see in the upper left there, I found a picture of documentation of a horse racing against a car. And everybody, it seems I've talked to about this, maybe it's our generation, I don't know. Everybody has this, it seems, in their memory, that this went on. And I don't know where we all got it from, maybe a movie or, or read about it, but everybody was familiar with this idea that they were doing this back then. So I, I just thought that was interesting to, to pick that one up. And then I looked up another version of a Model T. And that one was just a photograph. But in the upper right, I found an advertisement. I didn't know there were so many Model Ts at the time. Ours was called a roundabout. And um, I think, where did you guys get the one we used? You were at a. Well, it does in, in the ad. I think the one we used, although you can't see it, was Shen. Okay, so we keep reference pictures around and have ideas swimming around in our head that someday we're going to use, and this happened to be one. But I think this one was kind of modified as almost like a pickup truck, it seemed, but the horse and the dust is in, in front of that there. So we can go to the next slide, Catherine, please. And these are my sketches. Uh, I did a pencil sketch first just to get a little bit familiar with things. And then I don't do many vignettes, and I decided this was, these are little eight by tens, and they're behind me here. Um, vignettes of just the subject that I was working with to get a feel for and maybe just some of the colors and shapes. It was really to work on that black vehicle mostly and how I was going to approach that. 
Um, you'll notice the white shirt at this point is in the vehicle, and I do that a lot until I decide later on what color I need for a shirt in, in the composition. So, and the same thing with the uh, rider behind it, it's sort of a, a white shirt in shadow with blue on it. And that changed, and you can see the changes that go along as we go through it. Um, and speaking of that, we'll go to one more slide for me and then I'll give up the mic here. Um, this one, I, I painted a lot of flowers with my work over the years, so I offered to do some flowers through the painting and you'll see flowers come in and out um, of the painting with the changes that go on. Um, and that happens. Uh, you're going to see shirt colors change. Pay attention to that. It's kind of fun to see. It's not like we have it planned out in our minds all at once and it happens. Sometimes it does, but there's a lot of changes that you go through when you're working through a painting to see what works and what doesn't. So this was an early, in front of the vehicle there, an early uh, little desert garden there. And I get to give up the mic to Richard now. We'll go to the next slide. And pay attention, take a look at these skies, because I just asked Richard the other day, tell me about the progression you went through with the skies and how, how you went with that. Because we had a concept from the beginning to get to one of our desert type monsoon clouds that billow up in that, but we'll let Richard talk about his, his skies that he started with. You're assuming I knew what I was doing at the beginning. <laughs> uh, the, the original layout that I let them have then was sort of the original shapes of the clouds that I wanted to do, but it's, look at this one instead. Um, they're pale, that big space is, is fairly white, which normally wouldn't happen if I was doing storm clouds or that sort of thing, but keep in mind that that big shape was meant to balance all the stuff that was going on under it. Part of that process was then going to the next bunch of clouds, which were a lot more complicated, but they're too busy. They take up too much attention from the horse and the car. Um, we go to the next one, which is sort of the inter interim one, and then that's the last one we ended up with. Um, and it was just a, it's a matter of what the shape is, and what the value scale is, uh, uh, and the, the, the first three or four or five, I think I have about, how many, Fred, nine layers on this guy, uh, of one and then the other and then the other because the shape never worked out. Uh, and it wasn't, it wasn't so much how they were doing their part, it was uh, my working against against the empty space to begin with, which looked pretty good with the first cloud. But once you got all that good stuff happening in the front, then you have to change it all. So that was, you know, it's it's the same old, pro it's the same process, old process, pretty sad. Um, uh, it's the same process you do for everything. Uh, I made, it made the, uh, in fact, I made it to Hugh, the point the other day that, that uh, if you're if you're looking at painting, or if you're looking at art generally, but if you're looking at paintings or sculpture, uh, you have to remember that even on something this big, if you change an eighth of an inch down in the lower left-hand corner, it changes everything. It changes the complete composition. And you'll well, I do anyway, and I think these guys do as well. Uh, you can make that mark, and all of a sudden you're doing this in front of the paint <laughs> because it overbalances. You can see a tip. Um, so you make, again, being, being captain, thank you very much. Uh, again, it was my job sort of to, to take all that empty space and make it balance with what they were doing. Because once they started putting some action in and some, some real three-dimensionality and some, some solid stuff, then that all had to change. So does that answer the question? Very good. I took the, I took the so we'll turn it over to Fred now. <laughs> Fred? Let, let's go on to the next slide. And oh, I want to say something about the it's, it's your, about the skies. Yes. Oh, God. Because I liked every one. Hold on. Judging you what my taste is, I thought every one was I, great. I was happy with them too as they came through. It was like, yeah, that looks pretty nice to well, me. I'm not so sure. <laughs> okay, where are we then? So on um, this slide, I've got this down, and, and since 
you need the mic back, Fred, you can start with this. Um, we're going through, as this thing moves from one studio to another, we are gathering for a critique, suggestions, and to me that was almost more fun than doing the painting because we were together, we had Ginger along with us. In fact, Ginger came up with the title for this. We had several titles and she came up with three for the money. And she kept us in line. She fed us food over, over at her place. That's always a good no, thing. Wait for a minute. Us. I thought your lunch and your breakfast we had were, breakfast were quite at my good. place. I think we had beers at Richard's place. But go ahead, Fred, and talk about I'm not sure what we had at your place. <laughs> talk talk about the critiques a little bit. What how you, how you felt about the get togethers to plan our strategy and the critiques. You start. <laughs> uh, the critiques. Well, I thought uh, I thought you two guys did a marvelous job critiquing everything. Uh, <laughs> We're always critiquing you. You know that. Yeah. Well, I mean, we all handled it well. I mean, what you want is for me to say the quote. Aren't you? You're after Well, that. can you resist it? I mean, you've got an audience here. You can't resist it. Okay, when I Well, first... let me set him up for this. Again, Richard had the task of fitting, bringing this together. And Tied what it Richard all together. was doing was he was softening some edges the way he goes went about it, okay? And it was necessary because you've got this subject in the middle of the painting that has to blend into the landscape somehow and that was something we charged Richard was with so that sets you up for what I think you're going to say. You love that group. <laughs> the first time I saw it after Richard got his hands on my horse I said I think we were at Sanders Gallery because he was he was really enthusiastic about it. I said that's the base the best horse I never painted. <laughs> but I, you know, taking a closer look at it, 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 when we're done here, if you all, if you come up and take a look at the the painting, what he did in various stages is glop little bits of paint all over the the uh, my horse and the, the background and everything else. But in his genius, he was tying the whole thing together. It doesn't look like. Three different people did that, I don't think. So, how can I complain? And the other thing I tell people about working with these two is I learned a lot. This guy is a master of glazing, and, and uh, Michael does fine work too, uh, besides the breakfasts that we do. So, is that covering? Yeah, that, that's good. That's good. Okay. Enough? If you think of something, we'll, we'll let Richard respond to how he felt about yeah. our get-togethers. By this time, by this time, he was general. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I'm not sure what I should add to that. Um, the, our get process. Uh, we were doing, we were pretty much doing the same thing each one of us would have done individually. Well, I, I would. <laughs> it's, you, know, you work it, you work it, and it changes, and you... Uh, oh, that's the quote you were going to uh, remind me of. <laughs> Thinking about Richard Imes, Degas made the famous quote, a painting is never finished. It's only abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> and when they ran out of time, they got abandoned. <laughs> oh, the man, lion, they're just lying. Um, I, that, I, Fred told me that earlier. I, I think I've heard that somewhere before, but it's just brilliant because as far as my stuff goes, it is in fact true. You, have, you reach a point where you have to quit because generally anything else you do to it will make it worse. But if you see it again next year, if you turn it to the wall for six months and look at it, it's, you know, you'll be changing it because it's just always something new. And I think it's because, as Fred said, we learned, first of all, we learned a bunch of stuff, all three of us, from doing this. Uh, it, it was kind of amazing how much of a 
big learning curve we, we all seem to have on this. Um, where was I going with that? <laughs> uh, oh, abandoning the painting. Um, uh, That's what they do with cars. They don't park cars in Ireland. They, 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 I see. A little Irish. That's all we need. Anyway, I don't, Michael, what else do you want me to say? No, that's, that's fine. I will. I hesitate to say I'll, I'll make three comments and then I'll forget one of them, but oh well. Um, so what I really enjoyed was the atmosphere we created when we got together because there was a lot of joking going on. It was very casual and comfortable. And I think that for creativity, that was really necessary, that you have to get in that space. We created for ourselves a lot of times the research on creativity, these ideas come when you're not actually doing the work. You're thinking about something else. So if we were joking about things or goofing off a little bit, it created that atmosphere so that we could get back to something serious. And I ran into, you know, there was a decision, do we do it on board? Do we do it on canvas? And I've worked on both. Fred likes canvas. Richard likes board, so Richard put together a canvas with a backing on it to get the tension that he likes and still that canvas. But what I was concerned about was the surface of the canvas because I'm really particular about how, and this will sound obsessive, which is what we are, um, about how the, the canvas takes the paint off the brush is something that's always been important to me. So I'm into my car, a first sitting, and I give, uh, I'm, I'm a little desperate now, and I give Richard a call, and I said, okay, I'm used to a different surface. This is pretty raw canvas with just a coat of gesso on it. So normally I would have mixed my own gesso and done a pre-wash. But anyway, he gives me this idea. He says, take Lequin, cut it down with a solvent, paint it over the surface, let it dry, it'll be ready in a couple of hours. And I actually let it sit overnight. I came back to it. I called them. They said, perfect. It worked. Mm -hmm. So that's something that, you know, is a technique that I learned from another artist, which we're always doing. And then the, the other part, and this drove these guys crazy. If you look, good. What, what is Lequin? <laughs> yeah, it's just a, it's a more contempt modern medium that you can mix into your paints and it, it's really good for glazing and lots of Michael, different techniques. Let me jump, let me jump in here. Yeah. It's, uh, technically, it's, a, it's an alkyd uh, that they make compatible with, well, it works with oil. Uh, and, and the beauty of it is you know, it's the same as working with another medium except it dries overnight. I mean, dead dry. Well, it did dry enough to work on. Uh, but they've had alkyds since when? Alkyds in the 30s, 20s, I think. Uh, but this is the modern version of it. And there are a couple, of, several variations of this stuff. But it's great stuff. And, and uh, I, I think Mike would use it, but he hadn't, he hadn't done that little trick where if it's not working, you can, you can change the surface uh, by doing something like that. Anyway, anyway. Good. So the third thing, I can't believe I remembered all three. And somebody in the audience will appreciate this. I was, we were in, towards the end, we were in Richard's studio and I was looking at Fred's horse and again, obsession came in and I'm looking at that front left leg over there. <laughs> and I said, it just doesn't, it's, it's up in the air. And it wasn't visually, to me, it wasn't showing it up in the air, okay? And it was uh, just a little spatial thing. And Can I'm- you tell him whose fault it was? Well, <laughs> so, I knew that I was bugging these guys by talking about, but well, we we went in with some pastels or something and brought back the, the shadow underneath it right there, and it worked. And then talking to Fred afterwards, when we looked at his original sketch, his, his shadow was there, and it lifted that foot off, so it's actually in, in the air. And visually, I was finally happy, and, and then... I, I looked at it the other day and Richard again came back in and softened that after it got put back in. So, but he, those are the little things like Richard 
talked about with that color in the corner that you really pay a lot of attention to. And what Fred talked about with Richard with the color that he was adding, our technical term for that is juxtaposition of color. But, and he's softening edges, but he's doing things with those colors that make things vibrate in, in the painting. So, um, and I, do we have another slide, Catherine? Are we to the end here? Is this the last one, you think? Um, this is the last. Oh, no, there's one more. Is there? Um, so this one is a challenge to you guys. I know we've talked too much, so this is the two up there. Yeah. So, and, and a big thank you to Hugh Fletcher for putting this slideshow together. Yes, bravo. Uh, and Jane brainstorming with us on things. Um, and so Hugh put this merry-go-round. What changes do you see? Because you're looking at a version here and um, you know one of the changes that happened in the foreground I took out I had some flowers earlier on in, in those yeah. no no I took them out in the foreground in the bushes it just didn't need it and that and, and you'll see that you know sometimes you're overdoing things so I, I took they were a scrub type bush up close there and they really shouldn't have flowers but sometimes I, I can't resist so, so now uh, some questions you guys um, three cowboys three artists are those self portraits up there <laughs> Not under any circumstance. <laughs> the next question is, uh, when are you going to do it again? Uh, believe it or not, we actually have talked about it. So. <laughs> uh, well, don't applaud unless you have a good idea for us. We need, we need another good idea. Oh, I have a story there. Yes. <laughs> well, at first, and there was one other thing. This guy, his genius, he took this five by five canvas, and he he attached handles on either side. So with his wingspan. He could reach across and carry the whole thing by himself. <laughs> but that those handles occurred after he and I were transporting it, my lifting one end and he the other. And I began to let my pointer drag a little too close to the ground. After that, he made the handles and carried it by himself. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, he's got the biggest truck they make. <laughs> This size fit on an angle well, in his truck. That's why it got to be. If he had a bigger truck, it would have been bigger. Which one of you was the last artist to put the brush to the canvas? Always, always. <laughs> the captain. <laughs> Did you decide when it was done? Uh, no, no. <laughs> never did. Wait, we all three decided. Are you totally satisfied? Um, <laughs> that's a question that, you know, that goes back to the thing that's never finished. Uh, yeah, we were satisfied. Uh, uh, It's, it's fabulous. Oh, well, thanks. It's fabulous to have you here to, to, to talk about it. We're very proud of all of you. Go ahead, Sam. Did you keep up with your individual with your regular work? Yes. Yeah, of course. As a matter of fact, and I ought to plug this, Michael and I were both working on a couple of miniatures for the Settlers West show, which happens the golf. Well, yes. And we encourage everybody to go look at those efforts. Okay, and I have something yes. to say. It's of admiration. I love angles. If you take a look at this, you can help the fog housing on the angle, the steering wheel on that same angle, and the horse's neck, and the rear two legs, 
I love that angle. You see his coat brushing out and his horse's mane that brushes out. It's matched. It is so well done. I admire that angle. I love angles in any piece. But the second thing is, I love what you did with the dust. It reminds me of a new circus photograph of so much dust, and you've created that same feeling that she gave in reality in the photographs with that dust. I'm very impressed with the dust. There you go. Don't they soar into the sky? Look how they taper. That's him. I'm sorry, but that's what he Oh, well, I'm taking them out now. <laughs> See? Yes. Why did the three of you decide to do a joint episode? And how do you choose this particular thing? The spotty answer is uh, it wasn't a good decision. We didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. That was the one. It was just a uh, happenstance. So we, well, we, we actually go back maybe 30 years, the three of us members of the art members here of the MO Club and in uh, galleries uh, at one time or another. All three of us were in different galleries. Uh, so we were kind of attached for some reason. Uh, and uh, I thought it would be a good fit that uh, the three of us would work on this. I, I, think, I, think, I think actually friendship is yes. evident in the painting itself. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, that absolutely. always helps. Yes. I'm looking at the position of the rider and the horse that you did, Fred. Now, are you angling that horse away from the park, or are you running together parallel? Yes. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you picked that up. Uh, she was saying about the angles of the thing. Um, uh, the, the painters will notice, but uh, the non-painters may not. Um, once we get all our shapes established and all that sort of thing, pulling and pushing that stuff, we kept going back and forth on it. And the dust was the same way. It was how much do we put in? Uh, we I, I actually put too much in, and Michael had to go back and put that back wheel in a little bit so you could see it. It didn't look like a two-wheel car. Um, uh, but we got a good rhythm going between the, the horse, the car, the horse, the background. And the same with the saguaros, and the same with the, the clouds. It's it's that same sort of back into a wedge shape, back into the painting, uh, which I found to be a lot of fun, and I convinced them to do it that way. So there you go. Uh, let me call your attention to the rear legs of my horse. <laughs> that that's not the way I did them. I mean, the drawing was that, and the first paints were that. But Richard came back. And the way he was treating the ground with a broad brush and slashing strokes, that's what he did. He fractured the back legs of my horse with the dust. <laughs> yeah, but, and it works. Doesn't that work? So how can I complain? You've been complaining all along. <laughs> I can tell you what I, what I see in front of my friend is the day you know, he's got a very loose rein so he's comfortable going forward yes. well, he's got some tension on this rein right. so it looks like he's pulling away from the car like he spoke from the car yeah. 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 so he was yeah, yeah so that, that yeah. 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 there's a question back there tell us about the framing it's beautifully framed you all agree on that oh yeah well uh well, we, we buffaloed Michael on that. Uh, he didn't get a chance to have it. I was in Michigan. Yeah, I'm scared. He was out there. Uh, Fred and I went up to, the, up to the gallery to just look at random frames, and uh, he had, or well, Sanders had, that's a Montgomery, and had that profile on in a gold one, all of us, you know. Uh, and Fred and I both liked it a lot and thought that would work. But some, which one of us said, something brilliant went off in our heads and said silver instead of gold and it, I think it worked out really well I, I was yeah I think we were all really pleased with the frame yeah 
Um, Montgomery actually, uh, the last time we talked to him, uh, he was he was in the middle of working on it, and he had actually gone in and done a bunch of little carvings that he didn't charge us for, by the way, uh, because he was excited about the idea of doing it for this painting. So we, we won all the way around. We have time for one last question. Yes, go to the back. You guys have, have painted thousands of paintings and thousands of horses and the Grand Canyon hundreds of times. You're incredibly professional, accomplished artist. But this collaboration, I get the feeling that you actually learn something new from, from each other. Yeah. Can you describe yeah. some of those things? Absolutely. Well, I told you about my back legs, the horse. <laughs> <laughs> If you get a chance, come and look at it close. You'll see, what you call it, just, I called it little globs of paint that Richard put all over everything, including my horse, and it, uh, it, it's so respectful. It, it ties it all together. That, I learned that, and uh, blazing methods, and I learned, uh, about edges, quite a bit about edges, and glazing, and, uh, and not to quit on it. Tolerance and... <laughs> keep working, keep working. I, and Ginger has said this, I have a tendency to quit on a painting too, too soon. Uh, so that, and that's a valuable lesson, I'll tell you. Well, and the beauty of what Fred did with that horse, I was, again, relieved that he chose that one because I knew it would be a difficult one. But when he was coming up with his famous quote, I think Chris Sanders said, Fred, we can recognize your style in that horse, and his, his brush stroke is in that horse. And right after that, I think they headed to my place, and I, I told him the same thing. It's It's... But it was necessary what Richard was doing. And when we're, Richard went too far, we just went back in and... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that, and, but he did. He won. Yeah. I mean, he wanted the red shirt, and I was like, okay. And the jacket, I lightened it up because he wanted it lighter. But he had it last, so he won. You know, I mean, and that, but you know, it doesn't. It it, it, it works. And it, it, there isn't always just one way to do things. Well, it looks like we're out of time, but I'd like to ask. You, I think this has been a very historical night. for these three caballeros here. Let's give them a standing ovation. Oh, yeah. Yeah.